When it comes to espresso, there's only one variable that I think is undeniable in terms of its importance, and that is an even distribution. For the uninitiated, distribution is best described as creating a puck of coffee that is uniform in depth and density. The importance of this as a variable is because it ensures an even flow of water through the bed of coffee, since water will always find the fastest route through, or as we coffee nerds lovingly call it, channeling, which when excessive can result in lower quality shots. But an even distribution minimizes or removes this as an issue, and as you'd expect, there's multiple ways to get it done, ranging from tapping with your hand, combing with a leveling tool, and even stirring with needles, known as a WDT. So in today's video, I'll be putting a handful of the most popular espresso distribution methods to a head-to-head -head test and see which one comes out on top. But first, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Standart Magazine. Standart's mission is to connect the world through a love of coffee, and they accomplish that by bringing it directly to your fingertips and taste buds. In an increasingly digital world, Standart sees the value of a real tangible product you can touch. Each issue from cover to cover is a labor of love. To sweeten the deal, they also come with a sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters and a satisfaction guarantee. They also just dropped a fresh issue that you won't want to miss. So hit the Standart link in the description or head to standartmag.com slash Prometheus or use the codes Prometheus at checkout to snag a year subscription with free shipping direct to your door nearly anywhere in the world. I chose each tool and method used in this comparison for a couple of different reasons. One of which is just their sheer popularity, but the other one is each tool brings something just a bit different to the table. Tapping has been around the longest, and it's the most simple and inexpensive option, but it brings with it something inherently inconsistent, human error. The Ona Coffee Distributor, known more widely as the OCD, sits on the edge of the portafilter basket and features an adjustable depth edge intended to gradually smoothen and level the bed of coffee as it spins. The Weiss Distribution Technique, or WDT tool, comes in a variety of designs, but each one utilizes needles ranging in gauge sizes to stir and level the coffee bed manually. The Duomo V8 is like the love child of the OCD and WDT utilizing eight needles in a spinning base, allowing for a more controlled and consistent user experience. And last but not least, a tool I've been using for a couple of years, the Wellhome Pro ESP Cup, which functions more like a sifter to break up clumps and create an even grind consistency. Throughout all of the testing, each tool was used to pull and test at least 10 reasonably consistent shots of espresso. Reasonably consistent meaning within one gram of the aimed yield of 35, using a dose of 17. The same coffee was used for all the tests, and the grind size was not altered throughout the entire experiment. So now that we're all caught up on the testing methods, parameters, and the tools used, let's get into the nitty gritty, the results. So to get things rolling, we're going to begin with the logical starting point, and that is tapping by hand. As you can see in the 10 shots tested, this method does work relatively well in terms of extraction percentage with all of them being in the high teens and low 20s. But one of the most telling things the raw data shows us is significant inconsistency shot to shot, with the largest gap being nearly 2%. Also, the bottomless pulls showed a high instance of channeling and spurts, as I noted at least one defect per shot observed. This overall inconsistency translated into the cup as some shots being tasty that lingered with the berries and chocolate that the blend delivers, and some less tasty with bitterness and astringency. Next up is the OCD tool, which aims at creating a more consistent puck density and level tamping surface. The numbers here did show an increase in extraction consistency across all 10 shots, with only two datasets showing a substantial drop from the others. It is worth noting though that even with each shot still landing within the ideal specialty range of 18-20%, to it still trended more towards the lower end of the range. The bottomless pulls showed a medium high frequency of defects, with 7 out of 10 shots having noticeable channels or spurts. Considering the OCD's relatively high extraction consistency, the shots didn't vary much in terms of flavor, but it did fall a bit short on presenting the fruitier aspects of the blend. The WDT tool is the current industry sweetheart, and its design is intended to be as easily attainable as it is useful in creating an even grind consistency. The numbers with the WDT show a highly consistent 20 plus percent extraction percentage, 
even considering its manual use, hinting towards the process being more forgiving than other human-driven distribution options. The bottomless pulls also showed a very low instance of issues, with only 2 out of the 10 shots showing any form of channeling. The WDT's consistency, coupled with a lack of extraction defects, resulted in cups that across the board showed good balance and clarity with lingering chocolate notes and minimal bitterness. The Duomo the 8 is advertised as bringing competition level extraction to every shot of espresso, and like I mentioned earlier, it's like a combination of the OCD and WDT. As you can see of the 10 shots tested, the Duomo delivered in terms of its advertised consistency. On top of that, all the espressos had a 20 plus percent extraction percentage, putting it in close competition with the standalone WDT. The bottomless extractions observed had a low frequency of defects, with just 3 out of 10 showing any issues of concern, but generally running smoothly. In the cup, the shots were consistent in flavor, and I also observed a slight but noticeable bump in the clarity of more nuanced flavors, similar to the WDT. In these tests, the ESP cup is a bit of a wild card, as its design and workflow is a bit different. Like a WDT tool, it aims at creating a clump-free puck, but there is less emphasis on a flat surface. As you can see, the data from the 10 shots tested shows a lack of consistency shot to shot. Not as much as the hand tapping method, but still outside of what I would consider ideal, even at home. The bottomless extractions from the ESP cup were clean and didn't show the common, more messy form of channeling but instead showed obvious density differences in the center where the ESP cup leaves a small divot. But as you may be guessed, this inconsistency manifested in the cup as inconsistent flavors shot to shot, with a higher instance of sourness from what I would guess is the center of the shot over extracting. Out of my own personal curiosity, but also knowing there'd be many comments asking about combining tools, I decided to put the rest of the coffee to use and seeing how they performed as duos. And in an effort to keep this video at a reasonable length, I'm just going to tell you which combination worked best. And by best, I mean in terms of taste and extraction percentage. So as you can see here, the leader of the pack is the ESP cup, paired with the WDT, with the highest extractions not only per shot tested, but also when averaged out. The grind consistency from the ESP cup with the even surface created with the WDT also made for very clean bottomless shots and of course, tasty cups with great balance and texture. So when it comes to tests like this, I always feel compelled to say that, of course, this isn't intended to be the final word. But I do think it gives a solid cross-section of each tool and method's effectiveness, while also creating a broader understanding of extraction versus taste. As we've seen with the numbers today, nearly all of the shots tested landed within at max, about 2% away from each other, which, depending on your palate, can be debatable as a noticeable difference in the cup. But if you're here on YouTube watching videos about espresso distribution, I'm just going to venture a guess and say you're pretty deep in the rabbit hole and looking for ways to maximize your espresso's flavor potential. And in my opinion, one of the best ways to do that is to ensure you create an evenly distributed puck that in turn extracts evenly and cleanly, which often results in better shots overall. But with all of that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What distribution tools do you use, if any? And have you ever tested with and without distribution and did you notice a difference? And of course, what other espresso related topics do you want to see me test and compare in future videos? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section right down there. And of course, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.